The topic of my message today is the presence of God. All of us will like to be in the presence of God. And David says it is better to be in the presence of God for one day than living somewhere else a thousand days. And we always want to have the presence of God wherever we go. And sometimes we write it on our vehicles. Sometimes we write it on our doorpost. And everywhere we want to experience the presence of God. And sometimes we experience the presence of God and we where we overwhelm with joy and happiness and that comforts us. And sometimes we feel completely dry where we could not even experience the presence of God. So today I would like to talk about this presence of God. What is the presence of God actually? The reason I am speaking about what is the presence of God is because when we have a right perspective, our our expectations also will be right. If we have a wrong perspective, our expectations also will be wrong. So when our expectations are wrong and our experiences also will be something that are not meant to be. When our perspective is right, our expectations also will be right which will lead us towards, uh, which will give us a better and a, a true and a sincere experience in our lives. What is the presence of God? Various groups believe where different things about the presence of God. Some say the presence of God is the inner light that every human being is having. It is uh, the, the moment somebody is born, they are having this inner light in every human. And uh, in movies and all we see, uh, especially in Indian movies, a dia will be there in everyone's heart. When a person borns, a dia will come and when a person dies, the, the, the dia will be leading, leaving the person. That is how they picturize it. And various groups, they believe this. And some believe uh, the qualities of illumination, the knowledge, the insight, wisdom and the love. These are nothing but the divine light or the divine presence. When we have these qualities, we are, have, we are having the presence of God in us. Because God is the God of knowledge. God is the God of wisdom. He is the one who gives the light and insights. And He is the one who gives love. That is the reason many think having these qualities is having the divine light or having the presence of God. And some groups say attaining the higher consciousness is being in the presence of God. So once we attain the higher consciousness, we will be able to experience the presence of God. In other words, attaining the higher consciousness itself will be leading to the presence of God. And there are also other groups like pantheistic and panentheistic groups. They say the presence of God is everywhere in the creation. God and creation are one. The creation, uh, the uh, God is in the creation. So wherever I go, I see the presence of God. If I look at a tree, I can see the presence of God. If I look at a rock, I can see the presence of God. In each and every human being, they can see the presence. They say there is a presence of God. In every animal, every bird and every object in the creation has the presence of God. Because God is intrinsically and very closely knitted with the creation. And uh, little um, different from this perspective is panentheistic groups. They say God's presence is there everywhere in the creation in every object. But he is above everything. They wanted to bring uh, the balance and they wanted to bring two concepts of God together. And then have developed this perspective. Which are the transcendence of God and then the immanence of God. Transcendence of God means the God who is the God who is above everything. That is the quality. God is a oh God. Uh, he is above everything. There is nothing like Him. There is nothing that can be compared to Him. He is above everything. That is the transcendence of God. Because He is above everything, He is in unapproachable uh, places. So He is away from the world. So, uh, and the second thing is immanence. Immanence means the way God relates to its creation. 
how God relates. So they wanted to bring these two concepts together and they said God is everywhere in the creation, in every rock and high, yeah, every tree, bird, animal and everywhere. But in the Bible, we find a different perspective for the presence of God. And a word, we, we, the, theological word, uh, we, we get to hear that is called theophany. Theophany, it refers to the appearance of God. In, uh, he appears to humans in various forms. If you read the Bible, God appeared to humans in various forms. Sometimes in the form of angels. Sometimes in the form of humans. Sometimes in some extraordinary phenomenal form, forms like fire, light, cloud and so many things we can find in the Bible. So God, when God's presence is there means... There is, uh, there, there is somebody or something, is uh, some phenomena people started experience they experiencing in the Old Testament, especially if you need. So this presence is not like the presence of God, which we discuss, uh, so which we, uh, which the pantheistic or pantheistic people say, or it is not the dia the, the, that is in the hearts of every human or in the uh, tree or in the bird. So here Theophany is the God is coming directly in contact with humans and how this Theophany will be there, how this presence will be there. The answer we can find is very simple that is looking at the nature of God. Our God is Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. He is a relational God. He is a God of fellowship. In God there is a conversation going on always. If you read the Bible also. Before the creation of humans, it is written, it is said, let us create man. There is a conversation happening. Then God said, let there be earth. A conversation, a word was going on. So before the creation of humans itself, there is a conversation, there is a fellowship in God. What does a conversation rem reminds us? A conversation reminds us about otherness. There, is, there should be more than one person, one and another. There should be at least two, two, uh, two beings, uh, two, two persons to have a conversation. So, whenever God comes and appears in the Bible, in the Old Testament to anybody, you one thing we find it for very clearly and uh, truly, that is, he will be in conversation with somebody. God came down to Eden Garden. He had a conversation with Adam. He came down to Moses on the burning, uh, burning bush. He had a conversation. He came to Abraham. He had a conversation. He is a God of conversations. The God of the Bible is a God who likes to be involved in conversation. He likes to talk. So there is always this one and otherness and the conversation there in the, uh, in the nature of God as well as whenever God appears. Unlike pantheistic, he is present in every creature and every object. But there is no conversation going on. If the uh, presence of, I mean, the, the uh, presence of God is in me and in the tree, we both can uh, have a conversation directly. The God in me can have conversation with the God in the tree. He doesn't require, uh, he doesn't require, uh, sorry, he doesn't require any conversation. Both of them are one. So there is no uh, possibility for any conversation. But the God we find, he always converges. He always wants to have conversation. That's what we find. And in one place, so interestingly, we find, especially when God is going to bring his judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah, he says a statement, how can I not reveal it to my friend Abraham? You know, he wants to talk, he wants to share. So this conversation, this fellowship, this relational aspect is always there in the presence of God. In God in himself, there is a conversation and there is a fellowship. And when God comes to us, when, when he, his presence is made available to us, his, this conversation has been extended to us. That's why whenever he comes, he will be talking to us. That is the theophany we find. In the Bible and having said that there is another thought that uh, thought that we have to uh, address here that is omnipresent of presence of God 
we believe that God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. But according to pantheism, God is present everywhere means God is in every object of the creation. Is there God in Mars? According to pantheism, yeah, God is there in the Mars. He is in every rock and stone. Um, and he is uh, he completely immersed into the substance of creation. Is there God in Mars? So God is there in Mars. Let me ask you the same question. Is there God in Mars? What do you think? We Christians, what do we think about it? Is there God in uh, God on moon? Omnipresent, we say God is everywhere. What do you think about it? Okay. I would like to take the conversation. I would like to take the discussion uh, forward. If you read the Bible and even in the traditional Jew Jewish monotheism, uh, we find that they completely reject the pantheistic thought of omnipresence of God. And even they reject completely the entire concept of God occupying all the physical space. Jewish monotheism rejects it. That means Jewish monotheism, they reject God being in Mars. God, the omnipresence of God, it is not about God is uh, having his, uh, he is completely in being immersed into the creation everywhere. So, according to Jews, according to uh, traditional monotheism of these Jewish people, God is not, if you say God is God present in Mars, the answer may be no. Then, is God transcendent? Yes, He is. Is God immanent? Yes, He is. How? We'll, we'll see that in further. So, God is omnipresent and He is still transcendent to His creation, yet He is immanent in relating to creation. This is a, this is a difference. He is immanent to relate to His creation. He is not immersed completely into the substance of the creation but he is imminent imminent to relate to his creation god is not immersed and in, in, in the substance of creation and he is able to interact with creation as he chooses he he is transcendent and he is able to relate and in, can be interact with any as any aspect any part of the creation even to the stones of the creation he can interact with the creation how he chooses and he me he makes himself whenever he sorry he makes himself present whenever he wants and however he wants that is what the uh, omnipresence of god we find in the bible the omnipresence of god we can see in the bible is it's it is like he cannot be excluded from any location or object in creation he is able to relate to uh, all of them. The only area he is not present is in nothingness. Nothingness doesn't exist. And he the he only area where he doesn't exist is, uh, he is not present is in nothingness. That is omnipresence of God. Let's go further. In the Bible we also see, sometimes he may be actively present in particular situations and sometimes he may not reveal his presence uh, in, uh, in, in certain circumstances or in some certain places. It is completely up to God whether to reveal his presence or not to reveal his presence. Sometimes he manifests his presence with mighty acts or directly appearing and sometimes he may not re re reveal his presence. That does not mean his presence is not there. As I said, he is present, which means he is able to relate and interact with any situation or any area. The Bible says that God can be both present to a person in a manifest manner. That was, that's what we can see in Exodus, where God came with the Israelites in the form of the pillar of cloud and pillar of light and divided the Red Sea and uh, he l l took, uh, sorry, he led the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan uh, through by performing mighty acts around them. His presence was continuously with them 
so in a, in those manifesting manifestation ma so in the manners of ma manifestation he was with people and sometimes he is with people where he did not reveal his presence but he was with them that's what we can find in the life of life of jacob jacob went to the house of laban uh, they there he served and nowhere we find he served uh, god or he thanked god or uh, there is no conversation about god mentioned while jacob was in uh, uh, the house of laban at the end god tells jacob you leave this place and then jacob also remembers oh the god who appeared to me in bethel he spoke to me now again i have to leave this place so he all these years god was with jacob but his presence was not manifested in certain ways so god was with the israelites was taking them out of egypt where his presence was manifested and god was with jacob he blessed jacob but his presence was not manifested it is up to him he chooses he is everywhere he chooses where to manifest and where not to manifest it's completely up to him and uh, god's presence is continuous throughout all creation though it may not be revealed in the same way at the same time to people everywhere okay his presence is everywhere and uh, but as i said he, he, all people cannot see may not be able may not be able to see him always okay if he manifests also one of the examples we can see is uh, from matthew chapter 8 verse 5 to 13 where jesus heals the roman centurion's servant roman centurion comes to jesus and says my servant is sick if you could come and heal uh, he ask him to sorry he, he ask him to heal him then jesus offers saying okay i will come and heal him then he says no you don't require to come even if you say a word it can happen then jesus said your servant is healed the person is healed jesus was physically present and his presence was physically in a manifested manner was available to the roman centurion where he had a conversation at the same time jesus has a reach at roman centurion's house and he healed roman centurion's servant that is what the omniscience sorry om omnipresent uh, i am talking about till now he is present to roman centurion but still he is able to manifest he is able to reach to roman centurion servant he is able to interact there or intervene there he is able to uh, perform a miracle there so this is a good example where we can see uh, the omnipresence of god very clearly so god is omnipresent in a way that he is able to interact with his creation however he chooses uh, it's according to how he chooses and it is very it is the very essence uh, of oh, sorry uh, he he interacts with his creation however he chooses and his presence completely is a relational thing having said that we'll move to the presence of god some people believe god is present in certain places only and in in fact as Jew, jewish people also they were not in the from the beginning they were not believing god is present everywhere they believed god was present only in certain places he is not present everywhere the omniscience sorry omnipresent of uh, presence of god was a developed concept which jewish people learned later but from the beginning it was not the concept one good example we can see is genesis chapter 28 verse 16 to 19 where the jacob it is written then J jacob woke up from his sleep and said surely the lord is in this place and i did not know it and he was afraid and said how awesome is this place this is none other than the house of god and this is the great uh, sorry this is the gate of heaven then jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it and called the name of the place bethel but the name of the city had been loosed previously so he called the place bethel bethel means house of god where god resides where god lives this is a this is a situation where jacob was running away from his brother and going to the house of laban 
and uh, he reaches a place called Luz and where he uh, sleeps and in a vision he uh, he encounter he gets a vision where the angels were going up and down on a ladder which was set between uh, heaven and the earth and he woke up and said this is the place uh, this is the god lives here he, uh, he got a vision and he believes the god's presence is in this place so that's what tells that belief they were believing god's presence is in particular places it's not everywhere sometimes we christians also believe the same god's presence will be in the church not everywhere and what about this uh, how many churches are divided and having a serious con conversations and uh, debates on whether we should wear shoes in the church or not some say we should not wear shoes some say there is no problem we can wear shoe everywhere and how god when god's presence came moses leave, left the shoes so how could you say we can wear shoes in the church so the the problem here is not about wearing shoe or not wearing the shoe the problem here is their understanding of the presence of god according to them for moses the presence of god was in the burning bush that was a learning experience but for us we uh, we also believe the presence of god is in the church building only that's why we should not wear shoe and as christians we believe god is everywhere if you believe god is everywhere when will you wear your shoe we cannot wear shoes at all okay so for some people god's presence is in certain places only that is so unfortunate my brother and sister what are you believing are you believing god's presence is in the church only it's not in your house if we know we are in the presence of god the way we behave changes do you know god's presence is in your house do you know god's presence is in your office and in your business place and it is important for us to realize his presence is everywhere and we should live and act as if his presence is there and jewish people believed his presence is in tabernacles temples only but later they learned and they progressed and some people believe god's presence is in certain artifacts only you know uh jewish people did that so first step they they overcame the plays and artifacts one by one as i said you know step by step they overcame and they reached to the position where they believe god's presence is everywhere and uh, he has which means his ha he has his reach everywhere and uh, his presence is always interactive that is the developed co concept of jewish people but they had gone through a journey and those those steps i'm bringing to uh, your notice because sometimes we will be believing some of these that's why so jewish people believed in the uh, that the god's presence is in some artifacts only namely the ark of the covenant they believed god's presence is in the ark of the covenant only uh, just look at the example first samuel chapter 4 verse 3 Samuel Jewish people they were losing the war Saul in fact Saul king Saul was losing the war, uh, war so he wants to win desperately so what he was thinking let me bring the ark of the covenant so god's presence will be with me and we can defeat the uh, philistines that's what he thought in first samuel 4:3 it says it, it is written and when the people had come into the camp the elders of the israel said why has the lord defeated us today before the philistines let us bring the ark of the covenant of the lord from shiloh to us that uh, that when it comes among us it may save us from the hands of our enemies they believed god's presence is in the ark of the covenant that's why with that presence they can win the war so the presence is in some artifacts sometimes just think about it we christians also believe some of these stuff we some some christians believe god's presence is in the cross right we take the cross and do it sometimes god's presence is in the bible have you ever done keeping a bible at the head of a child while sleeping or keeping the bible at your own head before sleeping so that you may not get any bad dreams or you may not get uh, troubled by any demons yeah 
many Christians do that. In in my own family, we came through it. That's why I could say tell it openly. You know, if God's presence is in the Bible, and God's presence is in the oil, prayer oil. You take the prayer oil. God's presence will be in the oil when you go and apply. A miracle will happen. And God's presence is in handkerchiefs nowadays. Okay, you can take God's presence in the oil. You can contain. You can put it in a bottle and take. You can fold it and take because when a man of God prays on a handkerchief, God's presence will be in that uh, kerchief. His anointing will be in the kerchief, and you can carry the anointing and the presence of God. My brother, and where are we going? The Christian Church is adapting all this. Okay, so God's presence is in some artifacts, isn't it funny? After knowing the truth, sometimes we'll be believing and practicing that. We should wake up. And some say God's presence is in some phenomenal things, some miracle, miraculous things that happen around us, like in fire. Like pillar of cloud, pillar of light, uh, p- uh, then it can be in great clouds. It can it can be in smoke, it can be in earthquake, it can be in pandemic. Okay, one the example we read and uh, Elizabeth read, the scripture Elizabeth read to us uh, from First Corinthians chapter nineteen, sorry First Kings chapter nineteen, verse eleven to thirteen, where. Uh, uh, Eliza had an experience. Okay, uh, he saw like you know when God said, "Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by." Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting the mountains and breaking rocks in the uh, in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Sometimes, in some phenomenal things, when happen, then we see we many many times we we think that God's presence is there. And how many messages you might have heard and uh, videos have come in YouTube saying God's presence is in the pandemic. It is God who is bringing the pandemic as a judgment, and uh, this is the presence of God uh, invading the world. I I, I remember one particular place. Uh, uh it was in 2010 i guess i went to northeast i was in siliguri um and i had a meeting with a pastor we were about to conduct a youth pro- youth program so i went and met him and uh, he said that uh, brother we were praying for sikkim we were praying very earnestly and hum prabhu se prarthana kar rahe the prabhu ji sikkim ko hila de prabhu ji sikkim ko hila de karke prarthana kar rahe the that's what he said and the day before i met him there was a sh- slight small earthquake in sikkim then he said we were praying to god prabhu ji sikkim ko hila de and prabhu ji ne hamara prarthana suni aur sikkim ko hilaya hai earthquake ki zariya you know we prayed god shook the sikkim is it the pray- prayer we are we are we praying for the earthquake or are we praying for a new uh, re- uh, revival in sikkim and see how we are trying to find the presence of god in phenomenal so things that are happening around us that pastor thought god is in earthquake and uh, now many are thinking god is in the pandemic and uh, but one interesting thing we we see in the example of uh, eliza is this god uh, eliza could not find god in the earthquake eliza could not find god in the wind eliza could not find god even in the fire but he heard a voice from the silence it is written in words 12 end of sorry verse 13 and eliza her sorry verse 12 and after the earthquake a fire but the lord was not in the fire and after the fire a sound of sheer silence when eliza heard it he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the grave 
A gentle voice came from the silence. And Eliza heard and could feel the presence of God that very moment. Where, one interesting thing is, it is not mentioned where the voice was coming from. He heard the gentle voice. Where the voice is coming from? The voice is coming from nothing, bro, nothing from nothing but from within Eliza. It is not an external thing that's happening around. It is something coming from within Elisha. There he realized God is not in any of these phenomena. God is in us. That's how Jewish people also understood and were growing. And some people say God is with certain people only. God's presence is with certain people. Like Moses, priest, prophets or apostles. And many Christians, we believe that, isn't it? When a pastor comes and prays, the presence of God will be there. Presence of God will not be with the members. Only with the anointed persons. Major one, grade one prophets only. Okay? Unless you are a grade one prophet, God's presence won't be with you. And it is so unfortunate. I heard somebody came to me and saying, I can remove the anointing and anointing from somebody. Or I can remove the presence of God from somebody. What nonsense is this we are hearing in the church, my dear friends? So God's presence is with certain people. No, God's presence is with everyone. What is the proof? The proof is nothing but the incarnation. In incarnation, Jesus came and sat and ate with sinners and tax collectors. God's presence came to sinners and tax collectors. God's presence came to le lepers. God's presence came to everybody. Really, God's presence is not with certain people only. God's presence is with everyone. Emmanuel, God is with us. He came to everyone, all of us, we humanity. He did not come to prophets. He did not come to priests only. He did not come to apostles only. He came even to the tax collectors, sinners and lepers, all the outcast people, even the women, even the Gentiles. God's presence was even with the Gentiles. Colossians chapter 1 verse 26 says, The mystery that has been hidden from uh, through ages and uh, generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known his great uh, among the Gentiles, or great, great treasure among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. A mystery that was hidden from ages. Now God chose to reveal it. And he chose to reveal it through his uh, apostles and all. What is the mystery? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Where is the mystery? The mystery among the Gentiles. God's presence is in Gentiles also. If you ask somebody a question, do you think the presence of God is in a, a non-believing person? Many we Christians, we struggle to accept God's presence is in a non-Christian. Unless God works in their life, how can they become Christians, number one? Unless God convinces them or convicts them, do you really think it is our eloquence of speech that converts somebody? Absolutely no. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who works in people. That convicts people. So God's presence is in non-believers also. Then you may ask the question, if God's presence is in non-believers also, what is the big difference between I and them? Okay. And uh, another scripture that supports uh, God's presence in everyone, that is in Colossians 3.11. Here it is written, in that renewal, there is no longer <coughs> Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, uh, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Christ is in all. God's presence is even in non-believing person. What is the difference between us and them? The answer is very simple. Do you remember the time uh you while you were a very small kid how you used to go i i remember that looking at claire i can understand she doesn't feel shy when we change diaper she doesn't feel shy after uh, taking bath she runs away without wearing clothes and all 
and which is funny which is beautiful to see actually and she does so many funny stuff without thinking what these people must be thinking about me uh, do you remember any uh, your that that part of your life and i don't rem- i don't re- i don't know if she remembers that part of her life once she grows up grows uh, grown up and only we unless we tell she may not understand them it is the same with us we think about our life is more like the conscience that we have whatever we know whatever we believe whatever we have in our memory in our conscience that's what our life is that's what we think but let me tell you there is a lot in our life which may not be present in our conscience which we are not conscious about we all might have ran here and there in diaper or without diaper and we all had those funny experiences but we don't we are not conscious about them so what i would like to say is our life is more than our consciousness and do you remember what dream you had uh, day before yesterday i don't remember lot of things even in the night every night 7 hours we are sleeping most of the times what happening you know, what dream we got what we were doing in sleep we were not uh, conscious about it so we uh, our life is more than our consciousness so uh, we think god is in uh, in me god is not in me thinking about our consciousness when if we think about god have i have god in me the conscious thing then only we think god is in our in us and if we don't think that we we think we believe we think that god is not there so what i would like to say is our life is beyond our consciousness so there is a, be- a great like great i mean there is so much of no so much for our life which is beyond our consciousness god can be there where we say god is god god is living in us where where is god living in us is he living in our heart is he living in our kidney or is he living in our liver or in the brain he is in our consciousness a christian is a person whose consciousness is awakened by the help of the holy spirit through faith towards the god's presence in us and a non christian may not be able to experience his presence he may not be conscious about the presence of god because his consciousness was not awakened by faith by the way it can happen only by the work of the holy spirit and when we have the presence of god as i said what do we see when we, the presence of god is that there it is relational we start having conversation with god we will be having conversation that will be happening so seen as a christian has a presence of god and he will be continuously having conversation with lord and in our christian he may have the presence of god and his presence Uh, will be in his unconscious place with because of which he may not have the communion the con uh, with the lord that is the difference between a christian and a non christian a christian can have communion with the lord a non christian may will cannot have communion with the lord because his consciousness was not rejuvenated or made alive by faith through uh, by the work of the holy spirit but God's presence is in everyone there is no one where there is no presence of the lord the believer has the indwelling of the holy spirit which is talking about a having the communion with the holy spirit and a non believer cannot experience that sometimes we know that god's presence is everywhere as we said um, god's presence is everywhere and he has his reach every place that is the presence of god we are talking about it is not like pantheistic omniscient omnipresent that presence we are talking about but we believe his presence is everywhere we also believe that god is living in you and me but sometimes sometimes we don't feel that we feel god's presence sometimes very powerfully sometimes we won't be able to feel the presence of the lord what do we do in those situations the basic answers are number 1 believe that god said he is omnipresent uh, bible says he is omnipresent he is everywhere and number 2 believe believe his promise that you know in your conscience that he will never leave you nor forsake you and let me tell you a secret if any time you felt dry 
and you could not feel the presence of God, try this. Without fail, for 100, 200% with clear surety, you will feel the presence of God. When you don't feel the presence of God, what you do is, you go and meet somebody and start talking about Jesus to them. The moment you meet somebody and talk, start talking about Jesus, 100 per 100 for 100 200 percent you will feel you will find the presence of god amongst you because jesus promised in matthew chapter 18 verse 20 for wherever two or three people gathered in my name i am there in their midst when you meet somebody and start talking about jesus the immediately you start the conversation you will find the presence of god why that is the very nature of God. God is someone who have conversations, who is in fellowship. He meets amongst themselves. They were having conversation. He come to us and what does he do? Having conversation. When you go and meet somebody and start having conversation, what are you doing? You are practicing what God always, uh, normally does. Definitely for 100, 200% you will find the presence of God. This is a secret and no, nothing can, uh, I mean, it can never fail, for sure. God is Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. He is a God of fellowship. He is a God of conversations. The moment we start a conversation, taking the name Jesus, when he becomes a subject of the conversation, he is right, he comes right middle there. Let me tell you, I can tell you for sure, you must be experiencing the presence of God at this moment because we are indulged, we are in discussion talking about the talking about God. And one last thing I would like to bring and conclude. The, when we start having conversation and having Jesus as a subject, we can have the presence of God. The same thing has been explained to us in the Gospels and in church we call it Eucharist. The Holy Communion. There are so many controversies about Holy Communion. Some say it is transubstantiation. Some talk about transubstantiation. These are big words, I know, which means God's uh, the bread and wine which we are taking are going to become real blood and wine of Jesus. It is like they wanted to find and bring the presence of God into Eucharist in their understanding. So one one group of people they said the blood, bread and wine are literally turning into blood and body of Jesus, flesh of Jesus. Another person said, this is the same, uh, this is a uh, uh, very purpose to bring the presence of God into communion. The next purpose, next group of people say, consubstantiation. They say that, oh, the bread and wine are really not turning blood and wine, but there should be presence of God. So how shall we say, okay, there will be presence of God spiritually. So again, they want to bring the presence of God there. They say, when we take the bread and wine, the blood and uh, bread and wine are not turning into blood and uh, flesh of Jesus. But there is some spiritual presence. How? We don't explain. We cannot have any reason for that. We cannot explain it. But one thing is very sure that we want to find the presence of God in the communion. Let me tell you one more thing. When, uh, whenever two or two people or three people gathered, in book of Acts, in Jesus' name, they broke the bread. The moment when two or three people gathered and uh, doing something or talking about something, bread and wine, meal is the best place where we can have good conversations. When two or three people came and started having a conversation with Jesus and breaking the bread, God's presence already there, as Matthew chapter 18 said. In the fellowship, God's presence is there. That's why the word communion makes it much, uh, this particular experience, very rich. Eucharist, uh, communion may be better word than Eucharist, I feel. God's presence has come in the communion, not because bread is turning into something, wine is turning into something, but it is because two people gathered in fellowship in Jesus' name. The very moment we do that, God's presence has come. So, because why why does he do? He because he is a God of fellowship. His presence reflects his fellowship. And when we reflect his nature, that is through fellowship, having conversation about Jesus, his presence 
is there so if you want to experience the presence of the lord find somebody talk to them about jesus if you want to experience the presence of the lord for long find somebody call them for dinner or lunch and talk to them about jesus enjoy your meal you will feel the presence of god with very powerfully so i encourage you to indulge in fellowship with people discussing about jesus because that is where we find the presence of god very powerfully so i heard so many places uh, so many uh, titles in youtube where it's a seven ways to experience the presence of god six ways to carry the presence of you don't carry the presence of the lord you are in the presence of the lord sometimes you ac- experience sometimes you don't experience there is no way that you carry the presence of god but there is perfectly this method that uh, that completely works that is meet people talk start talking about jesus start having conversation as god the father son and the holy spirit always are in conversation and they involved us into the conversation and let us all let us also find others and involve them into the conversation and uh, you will experience the presence of the lord in a mighty manner may god bless you through these words thank you so very much